sorry, we were all late. How you doing, all? From downtown Los Angeles, Harmontown is now in session. Bring out the Game Master, Spencer Crittenden. What up, Spencer? I, I don't have a couch anymore. What happened? Where, yeah, where, where, yeah, where'd your couch go? I We negotiated this last episode. <laughs> well, for good measure, let's bring out the mayor of Harmontown. You know him, you like him, or maybe you don't. His name is Dan Harmon. Check to the left, to the, to the right, get a check to the left, gotta check the mic, gotta check the mic in a microphone. When I'm on the mic, I'm never alone. I got all of my friends coming at me. My brown is poop and my yellow is pee. We tried. There are 700 species of ant undiscovered in the jungle, ready to rumble. Rainforest extinction. Fucked your mama with grand distinction. I uh, opened her legs wide. What am I doing? All right, that was great. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm fucking. I got the streets in my blood. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> we were just saying at dinner that you had the streets in your blood. Streets in my blood. C- Cody thinks it's because I had a head injury, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, that, yeah. I, fi- I, I, I finally crossed the threshold. I rapped in my sleep. I was freestyle rapping in my sleep. Uh, and and it's, a, it's an amazing Instagram video because it's just pitch black because Cody's just grabbing her camera. And it's like, in the beginning, you can hear me like freestyle rapping gibberish because, you, and it's like, like you, it, it starts in the distance and then gets closer because she's like grabbing her, her, her phone. Right. Uh, I'm really impressed with myself. Uh, I think, I, like, like, I'm impressed it, too. Let me let, let me just I'm I'm just gonna well because I I think well there's there's contention about like whether or not it's because the streets are in my blood that's my theory right that I've been rapping so long that I'm now a real rapper and that's how we know because I I rap in my sleep Cody thinks it's because <laughs> that day I got I got drunk and I came home and I was being like a fun dog dad and I was like r- wrestling with the dogs in the front yard. Like I'm doing my impression of what I think like a man is supposed to be, I guess. Like, and uh, and then after a while, she's like, you know, you're just rolling in their shit, you know, like like. And I was like, oh yeah, I was I rolled in their shit, and uh, and so I was covered in shit. And then I went inside, and I was just very drunk, and I took a shower. And uh, Jeff I, is just learning this information. Yeah. And I fell in the you, shower. You, you, wait, you you. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, shit. Uh, uh, yeah. You 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 rolled. Physically in dog shit. Yeah. Well, in his yard. On purpose? Like you were just no, playing? not on purpose. I was trying to play with the dogs and be cool. Like a, like a, like a, I was trying to be like a Chris Pratt type of like guy. Like, yeah. come on, come on, Buster, come on, oh, you know, right. like, like I'm a man. I've done Michelob Ultra. Like, like, you know, <laughs> like, 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 like I, I, I come up with names for the lambs I'm gonna eat later. Um, Chris, yeah. Pr- Chris Pratt's Instagram Man, is a lot. You learn the names of, of the food he's gonna eat. Like the like okay. he, has, he shows lambs and he goes. So, like, so you had dog poo on you because you're you're a horse playing with the dogs. Yeah. yeah. So, so I you, wrote, then you took the, a shower and then you, t- you took a spill in the shower and, and yeah, I fl- my feet came out from under me and I just went straight back and it hit the back of my head on the horrifying. wall oh. of the shower and I was just kind of laying there and then I went to sleep and then I started rapping. <laughs> like in the shower, unconscious. Uh, I thought and, that would be and funny. And Cody had the pres- presence of mind to uh, film this. Well, she, when I started rapping, she grabbed her. She had she had she had strong instincts. <laughs> she, she, she didn't call nine one one. She just she just started. Filming. Well, she's you know I think if the rap's good enough, then don't call nine one one. You know. Right. Okay. Well, here's here maybe we can hear it. The bank rap is lit. You need you need to have for my name is Echo Slicey. I was born in. Uh, are you awake? What? What were you saying about the toilet paper? That was rappy. But what you, why'd you say you need TP? I caught early on, ran out. You what? I caught I ran out. My name is Freddie James Third. What? This shit's fire. Uh, what were you dreaming about? Eat them. What? Eat them. Meet them where? Eat them. Eat what? 
Someone stops. Eat someone stops and eats them. Who You're eats them? Hungry. <laughs> Wait. Ain't nobody we respect. What do you mean? Wait, ain't nobody like, oh, it's Plastic Man. Plastic Man? No, he ain't gonna do that. <laughs> Who's Plastic Man? Wow. You saw him last night. I didn't see him. You met him. <laughs> you, you, you have a concussion. Yeah. <laughs> You should have been in a fucking hospital. <laughs> well, I don't. I mean, if there's a cure for fuck, the, the mad science I was dropping, <laughs> that's just that, that does, it doesn't sound like mad science. It sounds like a guy that has a, uh, Alzheimer's. I said, I, I said my name is Angle Slicely. <laughs> Angle, it's a pop, it's a pop, Angle Slicely. I don't know. I you should have been in the fucking hospital. Well, I feel fine, and I, I made. How's another, your head? Uh, did, you, did, did you cut yourself? Like, <laughs> No, no, there was no blood. It didn't really hurt. hurt. I mean, what? Like, do you have a knot on your head? Like a no, bump? I don't. There's nothing. It it's, didn't I just, hurt. I just kind of lucked out. Didn't you land on your head? It sound like yeah, like well, you hit. I mean, I don't think I landed. Just on, on your I think head. I probably landed like on, your on my butt and, and like and yeah, yeah, smack. Yeah, I, I feel like if I die, it'll be uh, getting out of the shower or stairs. Mm-hmm. But like, like I, I have big feet and stairs are way too small. When I was a kid, I put like a sleeping bag over my head so I could like crawl around like a worm, like night crawlers or whatever. Right. And I uh, I was crawling up the stairs and I slipped and fell backwards down the stairs <laughs> in a sleeping bag. And man, I can remember the sound of my head hitting that tile. <laughs> it echoed in my head and then around the room. You know, it was bad. And uh, I've been depressed since then. <laughs> so I think that, that was when everything changed. That, that's your origin story. Yeah, yeah. That, that's your Spider-Man spider bite. Yeah, the next day I had a beard. It was crazy. <laughs> 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 yeah, and you had, you, you had multi, multi-sided dice. <laughs> that you, you used to be just like a weird, uh, like a shitty uh, Harvard stockbroker. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you, were, you were like a character from the boiler room. Yeah, I just, but late nights so I would play Nightcrawl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I got I got jumped by a guy uh, in San Diego. Maybe I told the story before on the show. Uh, I, I got like attacked by a dude, and my head hit the, uh, the pavement. And I'll never forget the sound of your head Bad hitting sound. a sidewalk. It's a gross sound. Uh, it sounds like dead. Yeah, no, it sounds like someone died. But yeah. you know, it's you I, I, making it, the it, sound. It, in that moment, there, there was another crisis going on. There was still a guy attacking me, but I, in my in my head, I was like, oh. Did I just? Are my brains all like gonna mm-hmm. fall out of my head yeah, right now? Yeah, you don't. You don't know what's happening other than so, the worst thing. It doesn't sound like a crack. It sounds like a crack and like like a like a a, a fissure like and an a, end, a, a break. Yeah, a break in life. Yeah, that, that, like th- this is it. I died right. on a pavement in San Diego. That's how it sounded. Yeah, that, yeah. it's 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 sick. I mean, it Oof. really. Uh, yeah, it makes yeah. me feel sick. I I I actually will barf a yeah. little bit right now. <laughs> I know it yeah, ends up being sound like wavelength. because I had a cousin. Uh, and uh, I was like put in charge of him when I was like eight, and he was like four or something. And he was going through this phase where he would like throw tantrums and hit his head on stuff until oh, people gave him what he wanted. That. But I was eight, so I was like, "Can't don't kid a kidder." Like, like, but I was like, <laughs> "Don't kid." I like a kid. took him took him for a walk, and we walked past a candy store, and he was like, "Candy, candy!" And I was like, "You can't." Uh, I'm eight. I get, I could buy you any candy. I'm fucking <laughs> broke like you. Like, like so, you know, so, like, like we're fucking kids together here. I'm just <laughs> bigger than you. That's it. Like, I, I ain't got no money. Like, 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 and, and then, and then he just like got down on the sidewalk and started hitting his head on it. And I was just like, what? Like, I, yeah. was, I was like, okay, how do you take? How do you? How do you parent? And I was like, I, my parents would Wait, just walk he, he away. He was just whacking his head on the pavement. Oh yeah, yeah kids do that. My little brother did that. And yeah. I was, I was like, he's bluffing. You got to call the bluff. And I walked like a half a block, and I looked back, and he was still going at it. <laughs> and like, I did talk to him when he was like twenty, and I was like, are you all right? <laughs> he's a firefighter. I mean, we need those. Great. That worked out. But it's arguable that he wouldn't have <laughs> chosen that job if he... I mean, it's a dangerous <laughs> job, right? But if maybe if that's he, how firefighters get created. He has a death of, wish. They're like, yeah, they're like doing like something incredibly dangerous. Like, like, it, like, it's the face pavement pounding of, of jobs. Yeah. He, he, I, well, I, you're looking at it like that's just in his... In his I'm, sa- I'm saying like maybe he, n- maybe he damaged the part of his brain that's like, you got to get out of a burning building. No, I, 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 I think... You're I not think, supposed to go in. But we do I, need I, people to go in. To put the fires a out. A kid that does that, and a person. So you're that, welcome. And a person that, a person that chooses that job is a person that's okay with 
uh, eternity. Like, like, he's he's, like, he like, made his peace that day on the, outside the candy store. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, like, death means nothing to me. If I had coddled him, he would have grown up to be like, what, a candy thief or something? <laughs> or a candy store owner, see, maybe. See, see I, I, I am a candy thief. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I, I, I was fucking, I was doing a play in Whittier, and me and Morgan Muchnick, we were uh, freshmen in high school, and we're waiting for, Morgan Muchnick was his name. Uh, it probably still is. And uh, we were, <laughs> we're, we're hanging out, waiting for his mom to pick us up and drive us back home to uh, South Whittier. And we leaned against the door of the liquor store, and it opened. So we fell into an open, empty, closed liquor store. And we stole all the candy. Mm. Cause, yeah. Because we had little, like, sports, like, like dance bags, like, like, for our leg warmers or whatever we fucking had. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, we, it was leg warmers. Uh, and we just took all the Starburst, all the Skittles, all the... God uh, damn. And all of it. And, and we looked... We, uh, I think we told, stole a couple uh, nudie mags, like, like, like tip mags. We, we've got a couple of those. And I said, the cash register's right here. And, and Morgan Muchnick wisely said, I, I, don't, I don't think we should do that. Too real. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that, that puts it over the edge. Yeah, grand and, larceny. And, and we're, yeah, we're 15 years old, but still that, that puts it into like, a, a, like burglary. Yeah. Uh, so we stole all the candy. <laughs> and we had uh, duffel bags filled with candy. And for the next three weeks at high school, we were hot shit. <laughs> I was going to the cheerleaders, like, hey, you want some Starburst up in this? <laughs> like, like, uh, we were drug dealers, and we had, like, so, someone's like, how do you have all this candy? And we, we just pretended like we were rich. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> all right. We, I, uh, we, we were just larceny. We I, made another, I made another composition. Oh. Whoa. I'm excited about this. They're all starting to sound the same, kind of, but. Uh, You're finding your voice? Well, maybe. Yeah, well, so did George Harrison. It sounds like another public domain <laughs> thing, but I think I, I do have temp, temp lyrics for it that I can present after I hear it again. But <laughs> that's a happy news. He likes it. It's so happy. Yeah. Wait, no, wait. Yeah. What? Wait, sing a song to it. He has temp lyrics. Well, I, 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 I have to Thank remember you. the... Uh, hold on. I, I thought... Okay, I thought yeah, uh, it's, it's like a, it's a one, four, five kind of thing. Let's do a it's, boys uh, to men style uh, creation around it. <laughs> no, I was the worst of It was good. I liked it. I had a fun time I, I, I feel like I'm going to forget it like while I'm... I thought, like, why wouldn't I? Okay. You're getting well, stage that, fright? Uh, well, I'm just, I feel like I'm going to forget the lyrics while I'm, uh, uh, maybe I, what, well, you know what I can do? Don't, don't think about the lyrics. Just, just, just be, be there. But you got to understand they're temporary lyrics, okay? Right. Like, you know, like, I don't want any guff about, like, oh, those lyrics aren't, they don't sound very refined. Wait, so, where's the, uh, so you guys know, but like Dan, he writes temp lyrics or he writes temp dialogue, and then he comes back later and actually like rewrites it good just to get it. So that's part of the process is is temping stuff. It's let me, important. Let me make sure this will play in the background. No, it won't. Wait, how come? Oh man, I thought GarageBand had a setting where you could you could play, you could have it play in the background. That's probably only the uh, iPad version. Fucking oh, yeah. Carmen. Okay, well, let me try to remember the lyrics. But they're temp, okay? They're placeholder. They have question marks all over them. <sighs> Welcome to Harmontown. Won't you lick my balls? <laughs> and after that, we can have a little chat while mankind falls. It's been said that we're all be dead. We've, wait, no, fuck! I, fuck, I wait, I forgot. <laughs> I'm it. liking, I'm liking this. You are really, yeah. Then to Harmon Town, won't you lick my balls? And after that, we can have a little chat while mankind falls. It's said that before we're dead, we'll see our species die. Welcome to Harmon Town. I'll try not to cry. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, 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 know, I know courtesy applause when I hear it. Um, 
because uh, I know you're here for our guests, um, and, and, and so am I. Uh, uh, they're a delight. We, we, have, we have flown them in fresh for you, like Maine lobster in a, in a, in a, in a chest of ice. Uh, so that you can enjoy them here in the desert. They're, 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 they're still chilled and... Uh, 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 and, and still people. Yeah. Um, uh, they're, uh, they're, in my opinion, I think they're the Goldilocks uh, of, of true crime podcasting. It doesn't have to be your opinion. I, just, I think that uh, it's been years since we had the My Favorite Murder Girls on, and those years for me have been filled with just endless true crime listening and uh, Cody and I in Tahiti we kind of like hit this point where we had run out of uh, of true crime podcasts like the four or five that we were listening to b- kind of binging they all ran out at the same time and we so we listened to like probably what felt like hundreds and hundreds of different people and just judging and sneering and uh, bullying their speech impediments and whatever you know just like bonding over that selection process and then we just found this this uh, these two British ladies um, uh, uh, and, uh, and and I'm just so thrilled that they turned out to be um, uh, willing to to come out here and talk to us uh, so please welcome our new friends Hannah and Saruti from the red-handed podcast yeah Anywhere you want. Perfect, perfect. I, for, I forgot to plug in. Help yourself to some uh, vodka at any point. There's I glasses over can. here. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Sergi. Hello. You guys, uh, you, you killed it in uh, karaoke last night. <laughs> You're lying, but thank you. No, you, you, you were great. <laughs> thank you so very much. You, Jeff. It was huh? very, you were very good. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the best. <laughs> you are. No. Uh, S- Saruti laid down some fucking TLC. Obviously, had yeah. to be done. It had to be done. Song that needs to be sung. And then, uh, no scrubs. And then you, yeah, no, no scrubs. <laughs> she, has, she has a, you, you have a hard line against scrubs. Yeah, no yeah. scrubs. No scrubs? No scrubs. And then you did Peggy Lee, Hannah. I is, did, yeah, I love Peggy. She's a big, uh, I'm a huge fan. And there was, it's quite a nice, easy one for karaoke, I think. It's yeah. pretty, pretty level. Yeah, it's very good. Thank you. And you guys hiked up to the uh, Hollywood sign today. Oh, huge mistake. Yeah. Yeah. No, we hiked up to the summit of um, Mount Hollywood by accident. <laughs> it really was it's pretty bad, yeah. And there's one true crime story associated with the Hollywood sign. Peg Entwistle hurled herself off of one of the letters when it was still Hollywood land, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was kind of like looking at Jeff. I thought Jeff for some who? reason was like, I know so Peg. Who is that? What's her? What's the she person? She was an thing? actor. Nineteen. It was like nineteen thirty something. Uh-huh. She j- jumped off the. I don't know. Did she stand on the top of the actual letters? If she didn't, it doesn't really count as jumping off the Hollywood. Yeah, it side. doesn't. But uh, yeah, I, she, I, I used to walk up there back in the day where b- before like there was uh, motion sensor like security, and uh, you you could hike up there and you could just hang out and have a drink under the the last O on on Hollywood. It was very good. And now if you go up there, you, you'll just get killed. Oh, yeah. We saw a coyote, like a real one. Huh? Yeah. I've never seen one before in my Broad life. Broad daylight, aggressive, <laughs> fire-displaced coyotes. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome They're to so the jungle, girls. <laughs> They're so bold now. I keep seeing them. This last year, I swear to God, when you drive your car by or something or you come out by your car, like they'll come up to people... Like a, like a domesticated dog, like happy to see people, and it's like this is this is gonna be bad, um, because like they're gonna get hit by cars or they're gonna eat everyone's dogs or something. But if you, if you yell at a coyote, they'll go away. But what they're gonna do is eat your neighbor's cat. Right. They will. I, 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 I'm, I'm for real. Like 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 you, you'll like if you live in Los Feliz or like n- near the park, uh, you, you'll just hear the sound. Of yeah. animals there's a dying. family of them. I story right in that like there's a bramble of things like right on the other side of that wall in my backyard. Yeah, it's a fucking. I actually need to talk to you about this because a, <laughs> you're on the payroll. Yeah. this falls to you really. Yeah, <laughs> and b you, you're famous on this podcast for having like prepped a coyote fighting method. Oh yeah, so, I've been out there. Come at me! <laughs> I do Fight yell me. stuff at him now. I like open my window and go, go, go like, like, yeah, fuck you. I, and, then, and then I go like, rah, 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 and I go, fuck it off. So, like, like, I just like yell at him. Saruti and Hannah, did, did you see wildlife today? We, we saw, we saw the one coyote. Right, yeah. But as soon as we took our phones out, that was enough. It ran away. <laughs> and um, we saw some signs about rattlesnakes, but no actual rattlesnakes. Yeah, which yeah. is good because she it's, had sandals it's, on. It's cold, so they're hibernating right now. 
But they're there. They, they love there. it. They're, they're, they're Do they fucking... hibernate? Is that true? Yeah. 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 Oh, What's wow. the most Cold dangerous boy. non-human life form in London? Theresa May. <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. I, I, I want to get Nigel Farage, but you you might be right. <laughs> Is there like a like 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 here? I would say like within Los Angeles city limits, like the brown recluse or something mm-hmm. like that, like a spider that if it bites you, you could like necrotize and lose oh, wow. your foot. Do you have anything in London that's like a creepy crawly that could like kill you, hurt you, hospitalize you? No. no. You've you got, got badgers. They're that's not very nice. Badgers? They yeah. give you TB. They've got TB <laughs> and they don't stop uh, biting you until they hear your bones crack. Oh, they've got TB. Mm. <laughs> they have Wait, TV. They, they have TVs, badgers, TVs. <laughs> you have badgers that, ro- that roam London? Yeah, we've got badgers, foxes. The foxes are a bit more like. I've seen, I've seen the foxes chill. in London. They, you, you, walking down the road in a fucking shortage. Yeah, they'll like fucking, walk you home. There's a fucking fox? That takes balls to be a fox and walk <laughs> through London. Oh, yeah. They that's get like where they, I mean, like, that's where they invented the, like, the, 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 the fox hunt. Yeah, well, it's it illegal is. now. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, but I mean, still, still the foxes don't yeah. know that. I mean, they're just like, like it, it must be in their DNA that you're not supposed to go near, like, Buckingham Palace. <laughs> or, or, in case the queen rides out on yeah. her steed. Uh, there's probably is, are, <laughs> what do they call what kind of horn do fox hunters blow a bugle uh, yeah bugle is it I a think bugle so. or like the, a, what, the really long one I'm not sure if I know what the fl- name is a flugel horn a flugel horn a flugel horn we'll, we'll, we'll look into it horn. moving <laughs> on moving on to true crime <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> But um, uh, yeah, well, so I, I did ask the Reddit, the subreddit, um, you know, do you guys have anything you, you'd want to know from these ladies? Uh, I, I would say like a large share of the questions circle around the theme of is it traumatizing, toxifying, anxiety inducing? Is it fucking you up in any way to be constantly thinking about people getting murdered and researching it and all that stuff? And I, I, I mean, do you want to speak to that first? I don't think we know yet what the damage is being done. We'll find out in like maybe five years. It's like Wi-Fi (laughs) is probably giving us uh, herpes or something. Exactly. (laughs) Whoa. It's just like lying dormant right now, all the damage we're doing to ourselves. What what, what was the, uh, the impetus? Like what brought you into that? Into the world of true crime podcasting. So we met at a party at Hannah's house. We didn't know each other two years ago. And um, kind of like what you and Cody were doing, Dan, we just listened to other true crime podcasts and we were like, that's all right. <laughs> and then when we met, we were like, we could do this. We, yeah. should, we should start a restaurant. We should start a podcast. Cupcake business. Exactly. And then I left that party thinking, oh, I'll never see that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what's, what's, what's the allure for, because I, I think it's a, a lot of women listen to mm. of true crime podcasts. Is, is it because, well, like, what, what, what is the allure? We're the prey, aren't we? Right. So often. And I think it's quite good to, I don't know, I think it's just, we're just morbidly fascinated. Somebody left us a really negative review saying, it's like you're morbidly fascinated by it. And we're like, <laughs> yeah, we are. There That's is kind of like, you is. know, there was, a, there was the, throughout the, the, the Reddit thread, like there were people who delved into that question of like, you know, wanting to know about the ghoulery of it all, if that's a word. But and there was one, there was one post in particular. It was like all the way like crazy. How are you simultaneously like a Tyler Durden edge lord and anti true crime? Like, where, like, 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 like do, do, ask them how they can stomach being uh, uh, the perpetuators of blo- whatever. It was like it was like somebody that was like really just wanted to shame the genre. Um, that was and, and I, I don't. <laughs> I don't think it's a righteous genre at all. I told you guys when we had dinner uh, the other night, like, like it, among the many, like, almost innumerable variables that that I like go to with in my head as a true crime listener, you guys are just sort of at the sweet spot of all of them, and that especially includes this spectrum between um, the kind of the, the ghoulery, like where you're just like actually like into how. G- bad things happen to good people and you're kind of like on the bad things side and then on the other end of the spectrum is this this compulsion that a lot of true crime podcasts have especially lately where it's like they you can tell they kind of feel bad about what they're doing to the point where they they're, they're now kind of contorting their language to make it seem like they're a public service like this is about remembering the victims and stuff and I'm like you you that, that's not a bad thing or anything but like really do we do we is it would it be so bad if we were just 
we were just fascinated with horrible things like in this like unhealthy way that we were kind of fixated on it is that really such a bad thing and you, do you guys ever have conversations about that with yourselves about like what are, what are we is this a healthy thing we're doing is this uh is this unhealthy in a in a good way is it healthy in a bad way like what, like where do you put yourselves in relation to the 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 karma of it all i think that um for me personally, like, I'm just fascinated with people. And I think that's why true crime is so popular because I'm always quite wary of people who describe uh, killers as monsters. I think that's quite dangerous language because you're separating them from yourself. But actually, you're just as capable as, of doing that as that you have all of the same stuff that they do, really. It's just a separate version of events that have led them to that point. And that's what I think is interesting. Yeah. But... I know what you mean. I think, like, it's important to not victim blame and give, like, name the victims and stuff because I think it's quite easy to just, like, reel off a list of, like, a body count and not identify them as people. Yeah. For my money, I just draw the... I, I don't... What I, I don't like to hear, and I've never... Ever since I was binge-watching Forensic Files before there were true crime podcasts, I, I, I know I always hated it when the implication, which was an implication that is kind of the bread and butter of those old school true crime television shows, the implication that you kind of deserve bad things to happen to you if you leave your television set, if you go out into the world, like like wrong place, wrong time. I've, I've ranted about that. Like just that, that underlying religion of like, well, you shouldn't have gotten to that trucker's cab. Like, I, I don't care how like risky the behavior is. Like, no one, you know, I, I, I just personally, for lazy, selfish reasons, I don't want to live in a world where anyone ever deserves anything bad to happen to them because I feel like bad shit's gonna happen to me and people are gonna, I, I just, I, I'm not like a, the brightest bulb in the drawer when it comes to like, minimizing risk. So I like, I, I, do, I just, it's, it's okay to say that was probably gonna happen because you engaged in that high risk behavior, but, but to, the, the, there's some kind of line there where like shows will imply almost that, well, what did you expect? And, and I, you guys don't do that, but at the same time, you're very much not, you're very funny and profane and almost like, so, I mean, you're, 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 you, you make jokes about uh, the, 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 the victim's behavior. And one thing that comes to mind, like the, the, the girl who disappeared from the cruise ship, that episode. Amy Bradley, yeah. Um, and you guys just sort of like, you're making like jokes about like, like who are these people and like the kinds of reactions they're having to their, to their, their family member going missing. And I remember just being like, like, this skirts the line perfectly for me. This is my taste exactly because you weren't like they're pieces of shit for having a bad thing happen to them. You were just sort of questioning their, their, their judgment in the aftermath, like what, how the cruise ship is handling it and how they're handling it and all that stuff. Like it, 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 it Dan, do you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have, have a point to that oh. though. Cause I would say that the reason, I mean, instinctively we wouldn't be the kind of people that would victim blame. It just feels grubby and it feels wrong, but also, we're definitely, well, I'm definitely the kind of person that constantly puts myself in situations in which I should probably end up being murdered. If you listen so to the show. loves a hitchhike. I, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I do enjoy hitchhiking. I've done it several times. I know. It was quite. <laughs> <laughs> see, see you, you, you like true crime because you're going to be. A, a, a topic at some point. To immerse yourself in it's going to be our <laughs> best episode. <laughs> the day I, I get murdered will be your best episode. I have to say that something. Wait, uh, for real, uh, uh, Sutia, uh, uh, sorry, I got, I got your name wrong. Uh, it, you really hitchhike still. I have hitchhiked, yes. like, like thumb on the road. Like standing on the road and not thumb. That's a bit old school. It's a bit cliche. Like, it's Venmo now. Exactly. Come on. Well, you just, how, how do you how do you modern hitchhike with not? You stand there and then you wait until somebody comes up in a car and they're you're like, "You're gonna get murdered." I know. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. She doesn't listen. No, but I would say every time that I have hitchhiked, I have absolutely had to do it. There's been no categorically other. false. <laughs> there's been no. There's been. This is a runner on the <laughs> show. Sarudi <laughs> refuses to I, stop hitchhiking. I've, I've picked up. I pick up. I've picked up a couple hitchhikers in my life where I was certain I was going to be murdered by the hitchhiker. <laughs> I, I got a hitchhiker one time and the guy left my car and he got out of the car and he said, thank you. And he, he said to me words I'll never forget. He said, don't take any wooden pussy. I, 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 
What does that wrong. mean? He's I've, not I've, wrong. I, I, I don't know what it means, but I've lived by that law for... <laughs> you gotta. <laughs> since, um, since 1994, I've never taken any wooden pussy. <laughs> Don't I will say it. there is a disturbing like <laughs> undercurrent of like oh I'm preparing for the day that uh, like this is going to happen to me like we're women we're the prey because like when I when I, Cody like when we were early on in our relationship I think I've like like bullied her out of like expressing it or something because she could see how much it upsets me like but the the uh, the I that that concept of like I'm I'm prepared for the day I encounter one of these like monsters like like i'm good like cody saying like i like and she's confiding in me so d nobody judge her this is her talking to her uh fiance that d d she, and not knowing he's gonna like podcast it um <laughs> but like 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 kind of kind of like c confiding a feeling like when we're talking about what we get out of this genre like cody confiding this feeling that like one of these days one of these situations is gonna happen to me and i'm gonna nail it you know and i i honestly like i it makes me angry because i i'm like stop it stop saying that like just like be terrified all the time like don't don't get cocky Empowered. like i can't like it's the worst feeling in the world is is that the thing um for women that love true crime podcasts or in your your, your love of it, it cuz like well if i walk into an elevator and a, a guy gets in the elevator with me I'm not. I'm not afraid. Right. Uh, if I walk through a parking gar like, like a garage, like a parking lot, and there's, I hear footsteps behind me, I don't think I'm going to get raped or murdered. But I think that's kind of the n neutral setting for all women, right? Oh yeah, it's like per a perpetual state of danger. Right on your toes. So when you when, is that part of why you do what you do and what why that's a fascination of the murder thing? Because murder is always an option every time you walk out the door. <laughs> No, no. For, I, 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 for, it's for, true, though. For, for real, right. like, like, like women get yeah. killed all the oh, time by right. their boyfriends when they by go them. jogging. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. it's definitely true. But then I think, like, yeah, I don't know if that is the impetus. I feel like uh, all women probably feel that way. So they'd all be running true crime podcasts, though. You know, sometimes <laughs> it does feel like everyone is. But um, I think it's more just I've just always been interested in it. I'm just the kind of person that I like like to go look for. What is the most disturbing film, the there most disturbing book? Like Dan Carlin from Hardcore History kind of yeah. comes back to the idea that people are fascinated by the extremes of the human experiences, I think the word he uses. It's like that's why what war is. It's like what drives a society to like throw people at other people until like one of them explodes or something, you know. And so it's like that is like it's so far afield from our normal lives that it's, it's somehow fascinating. And like you said, it's like we all have the same DNA and stuff. So it's like what, what separates us from these people that live this extreme version and, and, and that is fascinating, maybe. Yeah, I think so. And I think it's always we get feedback from people saying, oh, that episode was too gory or too violent. But <laughs> they are categorically our best performing episodes. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And some people like, like, we'll swear on the show, like not because we're uh, trying to offend anyone. It's just how, it's just how I fucking talk. Right. So I think... <laughs> Uh, so people will say, oh, I just can't, I can't stand this swearing. But I was like, okay, but like listening to a description of a body being yeah. cut up, you're fine with right. that. Right. Uh, it, it is weird to be what people's deal breakers turn out to be. Uh, um, yeah. I th it, 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 and you guys have such like grace and poise, and maybe that's like maybe forty percent of that is just Americans think all British people have grace and poise. But like, I'll take it. I'll but, take but 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 I mean, it's a, it's a it's an audio format, so the accents are like a huge part of what's for sale. I like listening to these voices, and uh, but you guys have this sort of confidence to you, even though you're dealing with these really like gray areas, especially in this time when I feel like I'll just speak for myself. Like I feel a con I, I feel like every time I open my mouth, I'm just in a minefield and all I can do is just f f fuck up like as little as possible. But so it's, it's kind of nice listening to you guys. Like you're, 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 you're smart and, and, and like you, you're, you're when, you, when, when the conversation sometimes goes into these areas of like about society, about like uh, culture, things that could be construed as possibly politics. Uh, although I think it's a shame that, <laughs> that these things are called politics these days. Um, things like the incel uh, when we did, when you did the Elliot Roger thing, I just, it was such a beautifully concise, like, I think it was you, Sarudi, like kind of like ran down just really quickly, like what what is an incel? What is the deal with this? And like like it was so it made me feel 
m more in control of a of this quagmire just listening to you guys like as eyes in like like talking about it i i don't i again i have no questions i'm a bad interviewer but but the, but the reddit people have 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 questions i the, some of the, which actually tickled me oh I, I but thank you also here's a huge service you provide um i urge this is a call to action like everyone has to stop endorsing the lie detector like i love that every time there's a lie detector involved in an investigation yeah, you guys specifically stop and make a point of how lie detectors are horse shit and that no one should ever consent to a lie detector test like <laughs> whether you're guilty innocent whatever the larger crime is lie detectors being taken seriously everyone just refuse them <laughs> Um, because they're just like the weird... I thought that weird... would get a bigger applause. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was a weird applause break there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I really, like, it's my, it's my big... I guess that, that and the 911 call, I guess I do have this, like, hang-up about, like... What's I, when the 911 call? Well, just that idea of, like, everyone gets judged for their 911 oh, call Oh, how crazy etiquette, they sound? You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. she yeah. sounds weird. She sounds so robotic. She's like a mannequin. <laughs> like, she must be guilty. Like, I, I, I just live in terror of... <laughs> It is like I'm gonna something's gonna happen to Cody and I'm gonna like call 911 and people are gonna listen forever to my 911 call. He was so calm. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have he a said feeling he that would if, hold. I do think that if something happened to one of you guys, I might. It, it was so weird that Dan, Dan during his 911 call about Cody, he he just kept talking about Chevy Chase. <laughs> like, like like why? Why would he do that? Yeah. I don't like I don't like that because just uh, like like because. You could say, you could justify any narrative and it would make sense because people are fucking crazy and do all sorts of crazy shit. So like, I don't know, was it Amanda Knox or whatever? She did like flips or whatever and they're like, that's what she do if she was innocent. And it's like, that's what she do if we're guilty. It's like, yeah. yeah, both of those are true. What? I mean, what? We're just, that's an idea you had. Okay. That doesn't yeah. mean anything. It's yeah. like a dingo baby lady. Yeah. Exactly. You know that one? Yeah. Dingo baby. Wait, wait, was it, was it cry in the dark? What was that? No, so this lady... Um, her yeah. her right. baby got eaten by a dingo, yes, and it's, 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 no one believed. Is it Cry in the Dark? What's, what's the film called? Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and no one believed her because she was too sort of stoic. Yeah, and um, she just kept talking about how dingoes eat meat, and it was like, yeah. stop, stop saying uh, that. A dingo took my yourself. baby. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> and then she went to prison, and then they found the baby skeleton in a dingo's nest. So yeah. the yeah. it happened. Well, but a people didn't believe her, her reaction. Right, yeah. that's the thing. It's just because yeah. people are just putting weird narratives from their own baggage on someone going through a crisis. I mean, that's why Dan probably feels uncomfortable by it. Yeah. Because it's <laughs> judgment. Yeah, exactly. It's particularly judgment about like how you're weird, how you right. talk yeah. weird, how you act weird. Let's do it. Let's do it. Someone did suggest this in the Reddit. They said, do a 911 uh, role play exercise. <laughs> and I'm not sure how to do it, but... Because the two things are like, if you're on nine, the two things you hear on every 911 call are, if the person is like uh, neurotypical in their reaction, like in other words, they're like screaming, they're in hysterics, oh my God, this horrible thing is happening. What is the, what is the thing that the 911 operator immediately says? I need you to calm down. Yeah, ma'am, I calm down, I need a couple, like, like it's so, like it, it's so predictable and, and, and I, 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 I it's like, why, why does she need to calm down? She's screaming, here's my address. There's a headless body in my driveway. It's okay for her to not be calm. She's giving you every piece of information. So, it's also okay for her to be way too calm because th th there's a shock factor. Yeah. Of and her to so, sound so, but then when she does that, she, then she's a suspect. Like, like it, it, uh, God forbid that they. Like, All right. Yeah. So, how, how do we do. Uh, do you want to? Yeah, like, I don't know what to. Well, what, I don't know how to. So who's going to be nine one one? Jeff, someone should be nine one one, and then someone else. Yeah, I think we just go right. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, let's do it this way. Because mm. it's like, uh, why don't we make it like the game of Werewolf, where we uh, secretly pick one of us as, is 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 a murderer, okay. and then we'll do a series of nine one one calls. Uh, and 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 you guys will determine which of us is the murderer. That sounds great. And, and yeah, I, let's do that. I, I think I think Spencer should be the uh, the dispatch, like the nine one one person. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So like like so, how so do we? we... Yeah, that's what I don't. We got to figure that part out. Uh, okay, well, well D Dave Klein, <laughs> don't my, cover your eyes my personal that trainer, Dave Klein, can you come up here for a moment? Dave uh, Klein, everybody. Uh, he's wow. my personal trainer, that's Dave so Klein. Oh, nimble as a mountain goat. Nice to meet you. He uh, laughed earlier. I ran Thanks into him that. at the drawing room, and uh, oh, fun. and you get, you he, get, he get, became my trainer. What do you got, Giants? What do you got? Mets, baby. Mets. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mets all day. <laughs> uh, okay, so Dave, what I'm going to ask you to do. <laughs> 
is just uh, we're going to close our eyes and then you're going to tap one of us on the head and that person will be the murderer. So you, so, so all, all four of the, me, Hannah, Saruti, and I, we all close our eyes. Uh, yeah, because okay. I, don't, I don't know how to exclude one of you. <laughs> okay. I don't have the heart right, to do that. So we're closing okay, our so eyes. We're closing our eyes so that we don't me. know who Dave Klein is picking as the murderer. No and crimes Dave, now. Dave Klein's going to... Gonna gonna uh, uh, t- touch them or somehow indicate to them that they're. I'm gonna walk around. I'm gonna walk around everybody so you can't tell. Exactly. Right. 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 It's right. like heads up, right. seven up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Did people play that game? Did people play four corners? Does anyone remember four corners? When I moved down here, no one played four corners, and then people started playing it, and then everyone was playing it, and I was like, did I bring four corners down here? And make sure you exclude Spencer, because he's right. going to be the dispatcher. I'm just closing my eyes to like right. sharing the group yeah, illusion. Yeah. That's, that's good. The group illusion. I might have invented four corners down here, though. <laughs> it was a Northern California thing. There's right. four square. You got a murderer on your hands. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm opening my eyes. Okay. Right. So we're good, we're good to go right now. So how do how do we start this? Oh, if you were poked, just to be clear, if you were poked on the right side of your rib cage, you're the murderer. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. But Nine how, one how, one how, call how, play. Oh, sorry. How, how do we like? Wh- how? Do, how uh, I think I who, who calls who wants to go okay, first? Well, we're figuring this out. Who wants All to right. go first? I think I could start us off if we know who's going first. Okay, well, should we get like a thumbnail of the murder though, so that we're all doing the same, so the, or the same crime? Like we just need like a, like a what, like a like uh, a cause of death uh, or something. Your spouse is uh, is decapitated on the kitchen floor. Okay, that's fair. And sure. you're calling nine one one. We have a decapitated spouse. <laughs> so if you murdered them, you decapitated them. I think, think eventually guessing. the audience I guess, who I guess, knows will guess. I guess not you guys, because... <laughs> right. Maybe Dave Klein can guess? Uh, <laughs> Wait, I, I can I mean, guess I, because I didn't see. Well, yeah, Maybe yeah. this is perfect. He's the Maybe knight. I'm a genius. Yeah. <laughs> I thought people would like me being smart. Thank you for helping us. Thanks for being nice to me. I, I need it, actually. This is a collaborative effort. We are making this up. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah. Is so, that... so, so, and and the, the, the prospect here is that we're, we're going to try to do... The uh, murder is going to try a, to sound a, like a, a murder. A, a, a it nine... doesn't make a lot of sense. No, it makes sense. It's like they're all going to... We're all going to be lying because we don't have a... It's a it doesn't make any sense. No, no. It's good. Hold on. Hold on. No, hold no, on. No, no, Did I, you have I, musical I think transition? The thing is, uh, let's say a, a police officer... First we wait. First, first I don't we, like this. First we we, we all make a nine eleven call, a nine one one call. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or or in England, isn't it just Ali Ali Oxen Free or what? Nine nine nine. Nine nine nine. Nine nine. Yeah. That's got to result in a lot more false uh, butt dials, right? Like I think it's just worse. But just if you ring nine one one, it goes through to nine 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 because it's on TV. So that's much. nice. Oh, interesting. That's so smart. first first everybody has to make a call saying that a crime has been committed and they've seen a decapitated uh-huh. lady. What don't you get? And then, <laughs> then I think, Spencer, after, after you have been the d- dispatcher, I think you are the lead detective and like the first 48 kind <laughs> oh, of guy. Well, of course. I mean, of course, yeah. yeah. What the, and, and then, so it's, everybody gets sat down and you have to make your first statement. Yeah, we all get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, what the, don't the, you get? <laughs> no, no. The key, the key this to this, the key to this game is, you, Hannah, you're, you're, your background is in theater. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saruti, you're you work in like uh, PR or like uh, events. Like we're this all, is we're all entertainers here. So with those of us who aren't the murderers, we just need to be so fucking good in, in the moment. I, are you saying that you're not the murderer because you're the murderer? Whoa. We need to be so <laughs> in like the werewolf. moment He's and the good that we Classic really murderer. do believe this, that we I found a horrible. body. This guy's talking like a murderer right now. He's fucking <laughs> all right. trying. Uh, I'm just, hold, I'm just, hold, everyone, hold on, hold on. Nine one one. What's your emergency? Who's going first? I, I think this, this is going order. Um, I, my wife is dead, sir. <laughs> Can you calm down, oh, sir? Yeah. I don't know. I, there might be someone still in the house. I don't know what she's. She's dead on the floor. Her head's detached. She's dead. Sir, she's where been are decapitated. You? I'm in my are house. You, are you safe? I'm in. No, no I'm not. Can Who's you safe calm in this down. world? My wife is dead. 
I need your address. Uh, two one uh, one seven. Um, Sir, d- calm down. Is that a seven? I'm, I'm making up numbers. <laughs> it sounds like you're. I making almost up gave numbers. you my real life address, so I freaked out. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Nine zero zero seven uh, 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 Golden Dale Drive. I believe that may be my real address from when I lived in Milwaukee. <laughs> uh, <sighs> okay, we're sending. We're sending oh, police God, now. There's so much blood. Just uh, tell me what happened, please. The calm down. Your head came away from her body. I just came home. What? I don't know. There's blood everywhere. What the her fuck? head's on the floor. I'm gonna, Jesus Christ! Uh, I'm getting out of the house. I'm oh getting out God. of the house. I gotta get out of the house. There might be someone I think I still here. Throw up. Sir, calm help, down. Help! Someone help! My wife's got her head now, cut off! I know that's not helping. <sighs> woo, woo! Okay, the cops are here. All right. I'm going to hang up. Their cops are here. Calm down. They're pointing their guns at me. <laughs> it's just a phone! <laughs> <laughs> My character was African American. <laughs> I don't feel good. <laughs> Drop that phone. Oh, boy. All right. Round two, should we go again? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> now no, no, it's Hannah. 911, <laughs> what's your emergency? Hi, um, you you have to help me. There's, I've just Ma'am. got home, and 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 I and I've just Ma'am. got home, and the the bathroom door is it's closed, and I can't open it. Are you sure it's closed? Yeah, I just I can't open it. Ma'am. I'm sure it physically opens, but I personally just can't open it. This actually, uh, this is not an emergency, is it? <laughs> coming out of, from under the door. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I think it's oh, my wife. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Calm down. <laughs> okay. I'm I gonna think need it's your... my wife, but I don't know, and I can't open the door. You need to send someone to come and open the door. I'm really, I'm terrified of door handles. Okay, please just take deep breaths and tell me where you are. I can't possibly. I'm in my house. That's why I've been asking you to calm down. <laughs> like, I can't. I've had to, I, I just can't touch it with my hand. Please send someone to open the door. I think she's really in trouble. I need to know where you live first. England, London, the universe. Now, can you slow down? Hold on. <laughs> what? I have my material address. Please calm um, down. We can edit that out. Um, London. Oh, wow. You said, I'm sorry, you said... Okay. I should have called 999. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Sounds good. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> Sound the, good. the American uh, 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 paramedics coming by steamboat. <laughs> like all the all the boats are pulling now, now, over I'm, to the side that, of the is, Atlantic. Is that the same crime? Are we, are we, are we still talking? About yeah, this, it's, the, a, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a spouse yeah. on the floor. But hey, but shout out to your right, fucking door. LGBTQ. I don't discriminate. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. And shout out to the dispatcher for not freaking out, going, <laughs> "Your wife, you're a lady." <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Saruti, uh, you, you're you're on. Okay. Nine one one. Not your emergency. Um, I just came home, and um, <laughs> it appears that my husband's been um, decapitated. <laughs> uh, ma'am, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, I, I don't think you understand. It's um, quite a situation we've got on our hands here. I think you need to urgently send somebody. Please. No, I, I get you. I get that. Now, if you could give me your address and please just remain calm. <laughs> um, I, I, I feel like I'm being calm, sir. Um, That's I don't fair. appreciate you taking that tone with me. It's, uh, <laughs> it's now um, I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's nine one one. Fox Street, <laughs> London. Now, you're eerily calm. Eerily? That's, yeah. You're, you're choosing adjectives there, sir. You can't just... I'm writing this in the police report. <laughs> I write this, police this reports. Is... <laughs> We're no, sending I... a dispatch now. Um, just stay on the line. Can you describe the scene for me? Um, I did. My, my husband has been decapitated. Right, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> It was just so unnerved by your calmness. I would appreciate it if you stopped saying such things, because this is being recorded, and I'm sure when I eventually go on trial for my husband's murder, they will play a recording of this at my trial. So s- stop biasing the jury. Uh, uh, wrong number. <laughs> Click. <laughs> wrong number. 
Ah. All right. Does Dave go or do I do I go? No, I, Dave, Dave, the, the I ain't no murderer. <laughs> Ask yeah, you, an answer. You're, you're, said, said the murderer. <laughs> All right. Dave like walks around and pokes himself. <laughs> 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 Only the audience knows. <laughs> no, Jeff, you okay. now you go. Uh, okay, uh, 911, what's your emergency? Hey, uh, my name's uh, Donnie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a manager at uh, uh, Sbarro's Pizza. This is 911. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine that works here uh, hasn't shown up for uh, a couple days, and I'm worried about him. But I, I, can I follow him? Is, uh, I want to file a missing person report. Sir, you'll need to calm down. <laughs> I'm just saying Johnny's number one on time. He's always here. First one and the last one to leave. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's, uh, he's my favorite employee. I just we, We've called him. We've called his home. And, and we've been to the house. And just no, no reply. I, just want to, I, I, I feel like something bad has happened. Our lines are very important. And this doesn't sound like an emergency. I'm going to transfer you to police services. But please, this right. is for imminent danger and people who are like on fire and such. OK. You, I'm worried about you. I, yeah. Th- thank, thank you. You know what, actually? What do you need? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's just, talk about this I, some more. I, I just want to find my, my, my manager, because I, I run a very successful bar of pizza. At the, the uh, Chicago Midway Airport, and the, the guy, the guy hasn't shown up for. All right, a what was his days. name? His name was uh, Raul. Clack, 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 clack. Well, it looks like he's live streaming on Instagram. What? Okay, so, so that's good news. Yeah. Okay, so he's alive. It's, uh, uh, hey, hey, here's how you, hey, Raul. Here's how you make a pizza. <laughs> what was that sound? I'm gonna go to check in my haunted closet. <laughs> I'm a Raul. I'm moonlighting as a self-employed pizza maker. Don't tell my boss. You get this? Oh my God! A scary! Ah! Ah! Sir, you'll my. need to calm. Oh, he's on the. He's on my phone. Ah! It's just Instagram. I'm dying. All right. So now, now I think uh, we all have to go into. Uh, our first meeting with, uh, like, the lead detect- oh, detective. Really? This oh, is okay. See, this was Jeff's idea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, look, I'm, I'm not going to slow down. I'm sure you're wondering why I've asked you all here. Are we all? <laughs> to a dinner mystery <laughs> about we, the crime in which you're all implicated. Were we all married to the four same? Four identical <laughs> murders to four no. identical doppelgangers. It's, 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 it's all the same murder. It's all, it, it's, it's all the same murder. And it's all the same murder. <laughs> it seems this event converged multiple universes, and I'm here to find out why. <laughs> now, why was everyone not calm or too calm? <laughs> Explain your logic. I was just in a panic. I, I was terrified. First for my wife and then for myself. I ran out the door and uh, the cops shot me. <laughs> wow. I just, uh, I really can't do door handles. Mm. A likely story. <laughs> what about knobs? <laughs> knobs I can do, but I have to do them with my elbows. Mm. Checks out. <laughs> <laughs> and and Saruti. Or whatever your character's name was, if it was different. Um, Talk. It, it wasn't. Um, uh, <laughs> stiff, stiff upper lip. That's, that's very suspicious. <laughs> I, I'm a professional, and I know these things. <laughs> um, I'll move on. Yo, I, got, Dave, I, I got an alibi. I was teaching yoga in Los Feliz, baby. I got 30 people that can tell you exactly what I was doing. We went through a whole sun salutation situation. Yeah. I had, well, there was a, a lady let out a real loud, juicy fart during Savasana. Everybody remembers it. Well, this is kind of unrelated, actually. You're just here because you keep poking people in the side? <laughs> Look, I got real strict probation situation, all right? I, you got to poke three people every month. Yeah, something like that. Or it's back in the big time. That's right. Checks out. All right, thanks. Jeff. Um, what the fuck? I, 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 I don't understand why I'm here. I'd like to have a lawyer present before I answer any questions. Right. Actually, no, your friend just got killed by a ghost, right? We saw it. We caught it live on film. Yeah. I, I, 
I, I, I run a very successful pizza company. A likely story. <laughs> All right, Spencer. Who's I'd the, like to lawyer who, up. Who do you uh, think is the murderer? I'm going to guess Jeff. I think it's probably Saruti, but that seems too obvious. Well, will the real murderer uh, raise their hand? Well, uh, who's, uh, should we ask the audience? Well, the the audience, they know. They well, let's ask the audience. Okay, everybody on the audience, guess on three, okay? Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. It, I heard Spencer? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't they, feel... They, yeah. they, saw, they saw you tap me. I, I, yeah. I, I, I yeah. was the murderer. I really thought it was Rudy. I just, you thought it was Rudy? I, I'm, I'm a master of game theory. You guys know about the Monty Hall problem? The, the Monty Hall what? I don't know who's enjoying this, but someone's going to love this show. Here's a, here's a question I, I, I rather liked uh, from the subreddit. <laughs> <laughs> little, little British talk, is that what you were laughing at? Because I said I rather liked. Isn't it just? Uh, isn't it just? You're just saying because I'm interrupting no, with, it, d- by it continuing be, my r- bad interviewing? It should be no, a r- doing rather. All right, come on. I, 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 my goal isn't to be British in it. Um, I like it. this question. That's I rather it. liked this question. Didn't I just? Um, does anyone think that our generation being obsessed with true crime will create better serial killers? It's like we're all doing research on how to get away with murder. Kind of a sa- similar problem with uh, antibiotics, right? We're going to make a super bug. I see, I see, I see. Um... I'd, I'm not sure whether true crime is a new fascination. Like, how, how long has America's Most Wanted been on television? But don't you think it's safe to say that... that well, I mean, that's a dumb leading question. I, do, 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 you, do, do we or do we not think that more people are kind of forensically savvy than, let's say, oh, 20 yeah. years ago? I think so. We know what luminol is. We know... So if you, so if you were going to, like, fly into a rage and, like, murder somebody or kill them for insurance, like... It's safe to say that you are going to maybe take extra steps. I think being a serial killer would be a big step. I don't think many people would be serial killers just because they think they could get away with it better. Right. But I think... Um, I <laughs> They're think... like, the market's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's my time now. I'm so well educated in this. But I think the average kind of killer who, like, you know, decapitates their spouse and then tries to call in, I think they probably are going to be more sophisticated, but then law enforcement is constantly getting more sophisticated. Yeah. And I think the pieces that people are better at understanding now, like luminol or, you know, DNA and things like that, but there's so many different parts to the investigation. Like when we talked about like Chris Watts, the guy who killed his wife and his kids, that's like a really recent case. The number of unbelievably stupid things he does, like Googling things, making (laughs) calls from his phone to like figure out where he can dispose of his wife's body. I'm like... Were you, what were you doing? Like, what yeah. were you thinking? It just also <laughs> seems like, and I think this is especially true in London, right? Like, there's just cameras everywhere. Right. Like, yeah. you can't CCTV. not be on camera Aren't anymore. Aren't we the most CCTV'd city in the world? Yeah. So. Yeah. I, yeah, it's true. I think, I don't know if this is true anymore, but at one point, certainly, uh, I read that you're caught on CCTV about 300 times a day in London. Right. Yeah. Although, although, a lot of places in London, uh, they it's cheaper just to put a camera out in front of your place and not plug it in. Like j- just to look like you have a, a CCTV. Yeah, absolutely. That's really common. So, so th- there's there's loads of uh, blind spots in London, and people know exactly where they are. And if For you're going to get into a fight or commit a crime, they they know where the cameras aren't plugged in. Yeah, I Do remember you- going to like an anarchist website like, probably 20 years ago now, where it was like you could you could plug two locations in London into a uh, like a map, and it would show you the route where you could stay off camera. Yeah. Just I, for them, it was just a matter of principle, I guess. I, 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 I was at a, a casino in uh, in Reno, Nevada, and uh, a, a guy grabbed a friend of mine, this woman, like grabbed her by the crotch, like Trump style, and because uh, he's a, he's a horrible human being, right? Uh, and I grabbed the guy, and security came over, and they go, "If you want to kick his ass, go to the parking lot and go to the right." And stand by this one thing because the cameras don't work there for a reason. That's where the security that, goes. That, that's where they go and they fuck yeah. people up. Right. They go like, if if you're gonna go deal with this guy, here's where here's where you fucking go. Uh, there's cameras, but it, but those ones don't work for a reason because that's where shit gets dealt with. Do you, 
do you think that true crime fans are more or less predisposed to like be wanting to commit crimes though? Because I might believe like people with a bent for justice might be more prone to do true crimes. So then maybe they're less likely to even do these kinds of crimes. So then the kinds of people who like this stuff aren't the kinds of people who are going to use it to get away from crimes. I don't know. Talking, talking. <laughs> hey guys. I, like, uh, like I, I've read a bunch of like true crime stuff and fictional crime stuff, and what the police always say is, smart people are the first ones to get caught hmm. because they think that they know what they're doing. Well, like, and, and, and they and they also think that they can't get caught, and also what, because they're smart, when presented with evidence and logic, they they go, oh, you've got me. Stupid people get away with it because stupid people don't see logic and yeah. they just don't fucking care. Well, did you guys? Well, here and 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 here's where the 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 twain meet. Um, did you? Is his name? Is Josh Powell? Is that the the uh, the, Powell, the Powell guy that uh, I think he was Mormon? By the way, <sighs> Mormons, we got to talk. Like 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 uh, <laughs> listening to true crime. It's like so, it's like the, if, yeah, I will put a pin in that. But. Um, <laughs> The, the 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 Powell guy is this is the guy who drove out to the drove out somewhere came back without his wife um, in Utah and then like forever they're investigating him and then um, uh, he eventually uh, he the, the 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 two kids he uh, he killed them like and set his house on fire you guys know what I'm talking about yeah the code podcast that yeah. that guy uh, like it, he 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 had seen a true crime case like in Utah or something. There was some comparable case that he was documented as having studied basically. And the lesson that his not entirely bright mind, but incredibly sociopathic mind had learned was simply don't lie as uh, like, like, like tell as few lies as possible. D if you, if you're going to invent a person, for instance, that like, killed your spouse in the alley don't don't say you don't you didn't see their face don't say you saw it and that they were uh latino and they were wearing a fedora like it, you're gonna the more details you give the more you're gonna get cornered and caught the guy was just it was it was like he was like the it was childish the way he like the, the cops sat him down and goes and they're, they're just like the cops were almost addicted to shame and the part of the perpetrator where they're like, well, this is the part where we corner you and you eventually like just admit that you can't lie anymore. But he just, he had like this weird superpower where he was like, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess you're, I guess that does sound crazy. And then just silence. And they're like, and, and he's like, eh, and nothing. And he kind of, and he just, that he found the, 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 it reminded me a lot of Donald Trump's effect on like, like the media and things where it was just like, we're not, we're, we don't know how to deal with this. We've never had someone just like with no, they're, just, they're not smart. They're not stupid. They're just, broop, he just like went through, like he just didn't, he just said as little as possible and then just sat there and he, yeah. he got away with it until he, and then he, and then he killed himself and his kid. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, like like that, we used to say because that was a that's many people asking that question. How do you how would you how would you get away with murder having studied all this stuff? The answer used to be have a boat. I don't think that's true at all oh, anymore. No, no, no. Those do, they're covered with cameras. Everyone's yeah, yeah, that, that's the new way to solve a crime. Have like, a boat it, it was good before there was cameras everywhere. Now now the answer is just don't actually like 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 as long as you can actually get rid of the body like like don't. Uh, uh, just say nothing, <laughs> like like ju and 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 let it get used to the feeling of everyone pointing at you and screaming murderer, but that just react to that like man, and then I'll have a sandwich like like and then like <laughs> our society it doesn't know what to do with that person. Right, I think in terms of like how to get away with murder, if we're, if we're going there, um, <laughs> someone not connected you to you in any way. That's how right. you do it, and then also. What I would do <laughs> Hell yeah. um, is if you inject someone who's not diabetic with insulin, they have a heart attack. <laughs> okay, and we should cut this out of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy to get insulin. That's crazy. And uh, it's naturally occurring in the human body, so they don't test for it. Hell yeah. We're fucking solving problems on Harmon Town. <laughs> Uh, That's that, crazy. That, that leads to a question I've always, I've always kind of had about true crime or crime in general, which is like, do we think 
that there's a, and I don't know if the term should be serial killer or not, but like, yeah, I guess it should be. Like, do we, how do I, how do I phrase this question? Is there a, <laughs> is there a fringe of incredibly successful serial killers who are so like good at what they do that they have body counts in astronomical numbers and will never be caught and have never been caught? Or is it like, no, we just, we, we catch them eventually. You know what I mean? I, I don't know how to phrase the question. Think, it's sort of like... Yeah, most of the time, I think they do realize that it's a serial, hopefully. But I do also think serial murders are the hardest to solve. We talk about this quite a lot on the show because they do do exactly what Hannah just said. They kill people that they don't know. There was no connection and no connection between the victims, no connection between them and the victim. So it's really hard for them to connect the dots and realize. And I think there are definitely serial killers out there with huge, huge head counts. Head counts? Well, that's yeah. not the body counts. Um, especially if they've been killing people that society doesn't care about. Right. And so if they're really they're, good, we don't know pro- who they are. Prostitutes die all the time, and, and that, that's, that's well, lots of serial In like, LA, murders. there's like a serial killer that's just been like busting homeless people's heads, yeah. and then it just kind of like, he, he killed a bunch of people and then stopped, and people were just like, eh, don't know what happened. And like that prob- person might be still doing it. Yeah, like if, if there's happened no, like if last there's, year. If there's no year. family that's, that's banging down the doors on the police station saying, like follow up on this, right? Uh, I mean, like even no, when no, nobody cares. Even when there is, sometimes the thing is, if it's like um, we've t- talked about cases where the victims are sex workers, and the the narrative will be, oh, well, no one was right. like looking for them, or no one was telling the pol- there were there were they had you know mothers and fathers and sisters and social workers telling the police to look. But the thing is, serial killer investigations are so expensive, and it's resourcing, and it's about who, how much was this person worth? To society, right? Not a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. if, if, if she's sad. yeah, if, if she's a blonde rich girl, yeah. then then there's more like traction on that. And there's also right. that element of victim blaming, like Dan was talking about at the start, in terms of, well, what do you expect? You right. were right. you were homeless, or you were a sex worker, or you were doing this, so it was bound to happen eventually. This was inevitable. Really? Yeah. And I think that there's, there's definitely an element of that. So I think. Definitely there are serial killers out there with huge body counts that we haven't tracked down because of who they were killing. And where they're doing it as well. Like it's if communication between police departments is that, really hard. The, the, the truck driver thing. Right. Like that guy that was just or that guy might still be not caught, right? Like, isn't there some American like truck driver guy that they, they think he's a truck driver? I'm sure there's loads, yeah. That yeah. just like they're starting to put the thing together, like the idea that this person has just been murdering like what do they call them? Lot lizards. I don't know what the, the what the term is for the like the the sex workers that frequent like truck stops and things like that, hitchhikers and things like and that you you just like if you oh, they, they just study the jurisdictions and they go this these investigations will never be yeah they will never be uh, related to in, in any single investigator's mind I think, um i think one thing i'd love to add to that though is um more and more now those uh we talked about it on a couple of episodes with the dna stuff now people just giving all of their dna to these private companies and then they're put into publicly searchable databases the police can search through them and then they caught the golden state killer Mm -hmm. last year yeah i don't know how i feel about that at all it's crazy it's it's absolutely impossible to have a conversation where you're anti-catch uh a horrible predator you can't come down against that but it, it, I never predicted that this would happen. I always predicted that we would have a, a, a point as a society where we got to have an increasingly difficult debate. Right. We've never done any of that for any technology. We, 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 I always, well, I remember when they started putting chips in cats. Yeah, uh, like my cat had a microchip in it, and I was like, where's this going? Uh, and it was, it, was, it was safe to have that because they were like thinking about, well, let's do that on prisoners too. And that way you wouldn't even need as many bars. Um, like there's a, you know, the, the chip is the bar. Like just let them look at it. But, and they always start with uh, house pets and prisoners and, and then our children because we love our children. We don't want anything bad to happen to them. And then like civil liberties start increasingly. And, and, and so all of a sudden one day the Golden State Killer's caught and then it was almost like a footnote that, by the way, the way he was caught was this incredibly, like, way too late to have a debate about it or Orwellian threshold we've crossed, where because we all want to know how much uh, Neanderthal we have in us, we, we swab our cheeks and send it to these services, and then somewhere along the way, everyone just, it's like, 
oh, holy shit. Yeah. You can just, I, how do we feel about that? Conflicted, <laughs> I think. Um, because, yeah, you have the the success stories of, like, the Golden State Killer, and now they're running the DNA for, like, the Zodiac Killer, and they're like, we're going to get him and all this. And, yeah, cool. But then, <laughs> like, the stories that are missed is there are so many articles about, uh, particularly when we were reading about the Golden State Killer, and we did that case about the 40-year-old um, case, the bodies in the barrel, the bare oh, yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, when we were doing the research for that, I read an article about a guy who was a um, high school teacher. There had been a couple of rapes in the town that he was living in, and he he had his his data his DNA was in the database. They said it was him. They arrested him. They took him in. They held him. Didn't charge him. Turns out it was like his nephew or something. And by the time they were able to identify who it really was. His life is over. He can't be a teacher anymore, even if he's proven not to be. Does anybody really right. like want him around their kids anymore? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you could, you could, you could. I mean, I think Trump's going to win in twenty twenty on the slogan "No collusion." <laughs> oh, he's going to win, and and, and it, it, <laughs> I just thought it was kind of. Funny. I, 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 I didn't I, expect I, that reaction. I, 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 guess, I, I said. I guess we're all a little worn out. Also, like, there, there, there was no way that the Mueller report was going to be what anybody wanted. It, 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 he's, right. he's, he's. I just love that idea that it was like that's the big triumph. Is it going to be like? Remember when you thought I was a Russian agent? I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, like it's like I like Ike. Yeah. It's just sort of a, it's just a little bit more of a negative society. Yeah. It's all it's when you're yeah. the, I am not a crook wasn't Nixon's slogan. <laughs> right, he didn't run. It was that. a thing he said while he was being forced out of no, society. It was, it, it was a thing he said it was before a, it was a, he it was a protest before he resigned. It was an impotent, <laughs> like plaintive wail. You, do, you you don't have to resign now. You can be a, co a complete <laughs> asshole and 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 get reelected. He's going to be reelected. Everybody, sorry. Fucking anyways, get ready. It did remind me of one thing. I I would never look up this podcast reviews, but I did look at yours because I was just curious oh um Even and uh, you guys got a flood this, this fucking pissed me off like I, I i like you guys got a bunch of one star reviews that were people that um your central park five episode um it, going like i used to like this podcast but i didn't know it was going to be about shaming the american president oh yeah, yeah what yeah. he wasn't president when he became famous for taking out a full he's part of a true crime story right he's part of the story like we got i think we got one in the the uk as well this guy be like oh like all these big girls do is talk about trump all the time this happened 30 years ago why is he being brought he's in the story like i can't like <laughs> he like what do you want me to do lie it's like if a knife that stabbed someone then became a senator later yeah. <laughs> that did it was there it's part of the story. I mean, it's not like you guys like take a big break and go like, by the way, here's what we hate about America. It was like, I, I just thought it was so amazing that, that there was like, yeah, there was like, like clearly like a big cluster of people that are like one star. And particularly for people who were like, I used to like you. And then I found out that you, yeah. that you don't like it when people try to kill people yeah. with, uh, we're so glad you enjoyed 79 hours of free <laughs> content before you yelled at us. For right. Yeah. For the one thing. Yeah. 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 The, but it's fine. It's but I also do that. I, I yeah, will start yeah. listening to a show if they say one thing I don't. I know. Right. Right. It's almost uplifting that they that someone from that demo could yeah, get through listening. all those episodes because I, I it's just an it's just an anglophile thing. If I hear an English accent, I assume you hate me, and I'm not even. <laughs> I'm as liberal as the day is long, but I, I'm, I'm just like, well, they would think I was tacky. I mean, listen to them. They I sound like James Bond. Thinking, no. I, I like uh, J J.K. Rowling on Twitter is fucking hilarious, and uh, s someone said, like, like, because she like outed like gay characters. In, she in just thing. recently confirmed that uh, Dumbledore and Grindelwald had all sorts of crazy, nasty sex. Yeah. <laughs> but like, do you guys hear about this? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, someone, I heard they did. They can and did it in a dumpster behind Hogwarts. <laughs> Hogwarts has a dumpster. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what's so weird. It's like Shouldn't she's trying to make like all these characters that, like... gay, but it's like it's getting really thin. These justifications. I don't think there was a dumpster. <laughs> but so, ah, so somebody, Walking she's, Willow, she's less maybe. into magic and more into just right. this PC yeah. agenda. Clearly. Hogsmeade, sure, but a dumpster is weird. Somebody somebody tweeted at her like, like I, I I I found out that you're into gay culture and like I I, I took all I have all your movies. I took all the CDs out and I'm gonna burn them on my lawn and uh, like, on the like, lawn. Yeah. And, and J.K. Rowling tweeted back, said, uh, that's great, because the fumes are toxic and I have your money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fuck you. 
can I ask you, a true crime? Oh, oh yeah, go ahead. Go um, ahead. It's just like okay. So I, I don't do true crime a lot, but it feels like uh, there might be if you could just separate it. There's like there's crimes that are kind of solved, and there are the details, and then there's crimes where you don't have all the details. Do you prefer one or the other? Is both part of it is one more fascinating? Because I don't know. I was thinking that it's like part of it's like the search for truth. It's like the unknown is there, and can I piece it together? But there's another part that's like, oh, here's all the details, and maybe I can own all these details and use that knowledge, which is kind of the opposite of like a search for truth in the void. I don't know. Does that mean anything? Yeah, I think like in terms of the cases that like, we do an episode every week, mm -hmm. possibly misguidedly, um, <laughs> but we're here now. Um, and so time wise, we've just got to keep turning them out. Everything right. has to be ready to go on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. um, so what we really want to do is do a long form show about one particular case, like a Dr. Death or a... Um, right. Happy face or something like that, um, where we have the time to like properly investigate uh -huh. and get a lot more, um, a lot more of the details together. But primarily, what we're doing on Red Handed is storytelling. Uh -huh. So it's just finding, finding what we can and piecing together the story. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you find them? Like, what's your like your like source for like picking your topic? I mean, the internet. Hell Mainly. yeah. And I mean, linked to that question, it, I really enjoy the ones where there's not all the details out there and we can piece it together and um, interpret it in a uh -huh. different way. But I think it just comes down to time. Yeah, of course. If um, we'll text each other sometimes, I'm like, I need an easy one this week. And by that, I mean, there's a whole shit ton of documentaries out there and there's all this information. I can read it, put it together. And it's like Anna said, we're not doing an investigative podcast. We're right. doing a storytelling one with our opinions in there. So it's just time. Mm -hmm. But the interest is really with the ones where there's not that much out there. Right. That's what I'm more captivated by myself. Yeah. But again, I'm not a huge fan, so I, I was wondering. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Dan. Do you think I, the guy from the, the staircase, do you think that dude uh, killed her or, or his son killed her? What do you think about that one? What, what's, what's his name? P Peterson. Peterson. Peterson, yeah. Jordan Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm on the fence. I'm afraid I can't. I actually, yeah, it's weird because it's like I remember. I, I, there's an old forensic files where it's just like plain and simple. Like, uh, wait, I can't even remember now. Yeah, I think they're, the old forensic files is just like this is a story about a guy who pushed his wife down the stairs and and tried to act like he didn't, and we got him through forensics. And that was like the '90s or something. And then there was the the whole documentary and the, like like there's yeah it's. I, re yeah. I I'm whipped back and forth all over the place every time that story. I think is he and his son did it. I think he and uh, he and the, and the kid like, uh, helped let's out. Let's do so, let's do some other classics. So they, somebody asked in the subreddit, "What about uh, Madeline uh, McCann?" Yeah. We get this all the time. They yeah. just they just want us to talk about Madeline McCann because she's British. Talk about yeah, her all the yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but. I don't know. I feel like Madeline I was, McCann was a girl. I, I don't know. Fill me in. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, everybody knows. I'm not familiar with this. Yeah, one. yeah. Please. So Madeline McCann was a um, four-year-old girl. She was on. She was British. She was on holiday with her two parents in Portugal. Who were doctors, by the way. Yeah, and uh, that's an important part of the story. And then um, they are like, you know, having a good time. They'd like go have dinner every night in this restaurant with their friends and leave the kids in the apartment, unlocked door, Ooh. unlocked door on their own. <laughs> And then they'd be like, it's just like having dinner in the garden. But it's like, it's fucking far. Like, it's not like having dinner in your garden. And then one night they go to, so they basically do a rota of one of the people having tapas going and checking on all the kids every like 15 minutes. And they go in the room and then Madeline's gone. But the, her brother and sister are asleep in the room too. And so really it's either she wandered out and she fell down a well or something, I don't know, or she was abducted or the parents killed her. And then the whole investigation was, did the parents do it or yeah, not? Because when the mum comes out of the room, the first thing she says is they've taken her. I was just going to say, maybe they were involved in some kind of high-end dark art like cult thing and they were like, give yeah. us your favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the wait, 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 Hannah, what, why is they've taken her? Why, why was Well, that? I just think if you were, like, she was, it kind of sounds like she was expecting something to happen. Yeah. Like, who's they? If your kid was missing and you saw, wouldn't wow. you just oh, be oh, like, I, I, she had, she's she had, missing. She had, like, details that she wouldn't have known. Yeah. Right, it just seems like, but this is the classic thing right, yeah. of like judging someone whose kid's just been snapped. Right, right. Well, like a that, that, that's Maybe another question that, that a lot her. of people have. It's like, okay, so use this as an example. So, so this is like, 
why is this case like extremely like it's a magnet for everybody? I, the reason is because there's enough room for speculation that it just in, it's a sandbox for everybody, it's right? A perfect. Storm. And then and then there's this other question of okay, so at at what point are we? You know, do we ever think about families of victims, uh, suspects, when when the stuff is still unsolved, no matter how cold the case may be? Do we, how do we deal with the karma, the thought of like, these are human beings that move on through their life. They haven't been convicted. They haven't been, and then they're, don't they have a right to like listen to podcasts and like, do we ever, do, do you guys run this through in your head? Like, what if, what if so-and-so or their family or whatever is listening? Yeah, I do. I worry about that quite a lot. I um, think we just have to be okay with the fact that we feel like most of the cases we've done, we never laugh at the victim. We're no. never mocking the victim. So I would hope that they wouldn't ever feel like we were. You guys no, came, in you terms guys came of like, down a little yeah, yeah. hard on the uh, tandem bicycle couple in the <laughs> Central Park Five thing. It was yeah, a little did. snobby. Yeah, where we do where we are snobs. <laughs> <laughs> two, two people in love might get on a tandem bike and ride it through Central Park. That's true. I just have never seen it in the wild. <laughs> It also it also destroyed our scene setting of New York in the eighties. Yeah, it did all this work of yeah. like, oh, a divided city exactly. and the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, and then there's that exactly. da, 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 my tandem exactly. bike at nine o'clock at night. It makes those people park. heroes. I mean, they're like, <laughs> that's why they decidedly did yeah. not deserve to be questioned. Like they are. Yeah, anyway, exactly. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> exactly. We spent the first fifteen minutes of that episode talking about the AIDS epidemic, the crack epidemic, the gang wars, and you know, I did a lot of research into the crack epidemic, and we talked about it. All and then the next paragraph was, and then it was 9.30 p.m. in Central Park, in Central Park 5, in Central Park, and this couple ride past on a tandem bike. Like I probably wrote that poorly. That was probably <laughs> yeah. my fault. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they, they believed the pamphlets. I mean, they, yeah. they, they, they almost paid with their lives. Um, the, uh, yeah, so... Like so, Madeline McCann. Like you get you, where? Where are you guys standing here? It sounds like you're thinking like like now. If now I feel gross because we now we just touched on the topic. I'm like what? Like like, like I, I it feels grody to to then go. What do you think? The parents did it. Well, a lot of people do think that the parents did it until this new Netflix documentary came out, and I've heard a lot of people who were like staunch her parents did it, who now changed their minds. I haven't watched it yet, yeah. so I don't I've know. I've been watching it, and I can't tell if the Netflix documentary is exonerating them if it feels like that because it's just incredibly sluggish, and they haven't yeah. gotten to the point where they start crucifying the parents. Caring. Exactly. The first but. episode is just you watch the first. Ep you can skip the first episode of that Madeleine McCann documentary unless you want to know lots and lots of unnecessary information about prior delusion in the 80s. Like, I don't know is why. It, is it one of those things where, like, like, the parents shook the kid, killed the kid, and said, oh, fuck, we just killed our kid, now we gotta... Oh, yeah. we, we gotta the theory yeah. is that they sedated her. Well, not the theory. A theory is that they sedated her. And then um, they go off to dinner so they can have a great time, and they come back and she's dead. Oh, that, that's a thing. People do that. The pe yeah. People drug their kids. So like, like Instead of having babies, they just dope them up. And, and they don't, that's don't why Hannah said people. it's important that they're doctors. I yeah. mean, God forbid that they're, that, they're, that they're innocent, and then all of this is being said. But it's like, yeah, their, their occupation like draws that. You're like, what if you're doctors and you're, you, know, you, you just want your kids to sleep while you go have... Don't tapas. they know that that's dangerous? I mean, you're not. I don't think you're supposed to administer sedatives all the time like that. Well, I got I got converted. This is the, the the interesting thing about this to me is that the reason the the way that we found the guy that I call Asperger detective. Um, Hell yeah, who, I like this guy. I, I um have you have you listened? To, no, I just I love the I, name. I really want you to listen to his podcast. <laughs> is he me? I'm not saying that you're like him. Like like I, I hope so. Like 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 he's like, he is just such a like he's so yeah okay it's like it's, he's. So so what? Dan? I, I, well, I, I want to know whether you would love him or hate him. I'm excited. I, I he's a very interesting guy. What's it called? What's the podcast? Uh, it's 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 such a weird, forgettable name, and it's like like it's like his. That's, that's part of what he, I he love about him it, is he that he's clearly Asperger's not detective. like a marketing guru. He's not a person. Person. He he owns it. He's like he's like, like there's. <laughs> he's not a person. His, person. His 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 <laughs> reviews are fifty percent one star, fifty percent five star. The Hell one yeah. stars are like, like what the fuck is this guy's problem? Yeah. Like what? He's so self congratulatory and he's sort of like all these things. And I'm like I'm like well if you're gonna hate somebody for this stuff then he's my hero. <laughs> and then the other ones are like he's so deep and thoughtful and interesting because he. Sorry, I'm babbling, but but he. 
the, 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 from a, the, the, he, with the reason we found his podcast is because Rosanna, is that her name, Rosanna, from the uh, Kil- California Dreaming, um, <laughs> who is another favorite of ours. What? She she was asked. She just does California Calif- dreaming. She just does California. I want to punch myself in the balls. Just she's great. She's great. <laughs> hearing that. She's great. Like no, it, no, she's it, not great. That's a terrible. Yeah, she's great. Well, no, it's, yeah, but some of these people aren't California. like fucking like they don't go to like uh, graphic design school for their logos. They don't go to like how like yeah. branding school. Like they they're really into true crime and like some of the best people have the worst. <laughs> Like California dreaming, um, but she focuses on I California, and she's truly, she's really good. And uh, I, if, if, I, if I kill somebody, it's going to be someone that calls their podcast California dreaming. Interestingly, and I, and, and the thing is, I have a boat. She's very thorough, and she's very academic. And uh, somebody asked her, "She's dead." <laughs> I knew it. Somebody asked her, "Is there any true crime if she, podcast?" If she turns up dead tomorrow or missing. <laughs> I, I did it. You're going to jail. <laughs> it's based on a title. Yes. Uh, you, they get worse. Uh, oh, what? Yeah. No. Like, what? well, d- what's yeah. worse than California? Well, actually, Green? okay. They're, they don't get worse. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give you ten called? minutes to come up with the worst name of a true crime. <sighs> There's like one that's like all Austin true crime, and it's called like k- k- Killers and Cattle or something. I don't know. It's they're like like all crime, no cattle. I can't. It's, it's like like it's not, they're trying to make a Oof. Texas thing happen. Oof. Just let me finish my thought. We okay. have guests. No. I, I'm just gonna. I, I just realize I'm a murderer. Ro, 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 so, <laughs> and and I've told you all, and I'm, I'm fine doing the time. <laughs> Rosanna from California Dreaming was as Cody told me this that that uh, she was asked. Is there a case that you changed your mind on based on an episode of another person's true crime podcast? So this is a really in- interesting question that I'd like to ask you guys. But and she said yes. Asperger detectives. Uh, tra- she didn't call him that. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, this guy. His his podcast is called. I mean, I, I'm, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give him. Uh, I, I give his, his due signal boost. I mean, I, I I look. I love the guy and. Uh, same deal, buddy. I'll fly you out from We're Los Angeles. Gonna, he lives in LA. He lives in LA. It's totally affordable. Um, Where'd I you get him on then? I can't remember. It's called like Cold Case. Crap. It's Murder Files. Mo- What's cold that? Case Murder Mysteries, Cody cold, said. Cold, cold Case Murder Mysteries. He's, uh, 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 yeah, he's this guy, and he talks like this, and he never stops talking like this. Like, he, you won't, I mean, like, like, look, you've been, he's polarizing, but he is, like, he, he approaches the, she said, yes, his treatment of the Madeline McCain story, like, it changed her mind. Uh, and when you listen to it, that's that's an episode I would recommend if you want to get into this guy as his Madeline McCain episode, because he just sort of makes it seem incredibly obvious that there was never a plan. They what they they were on vacation. They were they were using micro doses of like you know kind of sedative that they were con- they're very comfortable with as a professional couple of doctors. They were like just keeping the kids there was a there the, the kids already on the trip had been actually getting up out of bed and like you know they they just they crossed a threshold of like eh, let's just nyquil them but on a pro level and and that and that actually like not that they they didn't OD them because you're correct they wouldn't do that they would know the right amount and what actually did happen is that the the kid was high and got up still and was tooling around the place alone and like um, was playing on like this spot where the one of the the dogs did go to when they were investigating one of the corpse sniffing dogs like descended on this one area of the uh, the, the the room where the uh, Asperger detective, I have to stop calling him that. Um, uh, Cold sa- case murder mystery s- man s- says says that that's she probably she maybe like fell off the couch. I mean she was four, right? It's like 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 it's just she maybe climbed up on top and like fell and like it's just freak accident, total freak accident. They they found out about it and then they kind of like just w- w- worked out a thing where they uh, like and, and it's it actually like. The, that version of events, I, I, I feel bad for the for the parents if that really happened because they, 
they would be in a, they would be, their lives would be fucked. They come home to that and it's like, it's a tragedy. I'm not saying any, it's, it's, but it's just like, imagine that. And it's like, oh God, the, what do any of us do when we're pushed to the point where a lie is equidistant from, from the truth in terms of like how much it fucks up your life? Mm. Where you're like, I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm made of in, in, if I'm ever put in a position like that. I'm not sure. I mean, we, we kind of like, we've all been in situations where like, like a, a lie was just, just easier. Did they find the child and, and did they do an autopsy? Uh, no, she's missing. No, they, they've never found oh. a trace of the kid, which is in, its, in and of itself, it's just incredibly strange. I, I mean, how do you... Yeah, I think that's the thing that makes it feel like it's not the parents because if they, if they did do it, I do think it's like you said, Dan, like they, it was an accident. They didn't maliciously murder her. They got a bunch of other kids. They're not exactly. like, like no oh, reason. we hate kids. We want to exactly. live a free life. Like, well, exactly. It was an accident. But, and they're in a foreign country. They don't, they're not from Portugal. They're on holiday there. They're in like a holiday resort. Where have they taken this four-year-old's body that the British police went and helped as well? So the Portuguese police and the British police are looking for Maddie and they never found her. And the parents in a foreign country were able to dispose of this four-year-old's body that well. That's the thing that doesn't make sense to me. It's also just strange, the idea of like a rando that comes in a back door and takes a kid. How do they... That, that was one of... Uh, AD's um, points um, was like this is a a AD stands for Asperger detective. This is a this is a sloppy crime. You don't. This isn't like it's not like Spectre or 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 like uh, you know uh, the whatever the bad guy's name you can't say. It was like uh, I must have like this one. It, it wasn't like an. It's not an organized thing. You go in and snatch a kid. And um, if they did take them, they took them in a... It's like that person doesn't then put the energy and resources into making someone vanish. Right, exactly. And I think, like, snatching a kid like Madeleine McCann is incredibly high risk. Like, it's the same thing with Amy Bradley, like, kidnapping someone who's on a cruise ship where there's physically nowhere to go. Like, why are you... What is the gain for That's, you that yeah. is so huge that makes that worth it in such a high... Like... High risk, high stakes. What do stakes. you guys think happened to, to her on the cruise ship? Amy Bradley. Do you think she fell overboard? I think. Uh, Wait, I used g to think give, give me the uh, the meat and potatoes of, of that. Oh, cruise, sorry, that yeah. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Amy Bradley, uh, American lady. I think she was uh, in her early twenties. I think went on a cruise with her family and she disappeared. Um, as they were like out to sea, like round Aruba. Um, and there's all this stuff. They get to Aruba, they can't find her. She's been missing for hours, but they're on a, sh they're on a ship. So they're like, well, she's clearly here. We just don't know where. So they did a bit of a half hour search. Anyway, they never found her. Um, and there was a couple of sightings of her. This one guy um, who's just the worst human being um, said that he contacted her family. He said, I, I, know, where, I know where she is. Uh, she's living on a compound with this man who's got sleeve tattoos and long blonde hair. I can extract her for you. So they sent him all of this money, and it was all bullshit. It wasn't true. Um, so he was just sitting on an island in the Caribbean off their money for months at a time. Anyway, so the leading theories are that she was sold into sex slavery. There's because it's the Dutch Caribbean where she was, so obviously uh, it has the same laws as um, the Netherlands for sex work, etc. Um, and there's a picture which people think is her from years later on like one of these like sex holiday websites. Wow. But Wait, she she was extracted off of this cruise ship yeah. somehow. Maybe. That's a theory. Yeah. Or she fell overboard. Ha but like bodies generally wash up. Like they weren't that far out to sea. Right. It's just a, it's a it's a it's a nightmare scenario because it's like you find out like that these uh these cruise lines they're they're owned by they're not accountable to the no, no. the laws that we think they are, they're like, they purposely, even if they are American corporations, they purposely work through uh, international uh, law because that makes it a lot easier to abuse labor, for instance. So the guy teaching you shuffleboard can only be paid a penny if you're not an American you, company. You know who this is a case for? Asperger. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will, I will, okay. I, I, I mean, I, 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 I guess I'm not surprised we burnt through all our time, but um, I did, I like, oh. I always, like, well, do you guys have a, I don't know what the word favorite means in this context. Do you have a favorite case? I, whatever that means to you. And then I'm going to tell you mine. 
One that we've done on the show. Uh, or not. I, if you, One that you can't do because you, it's too gross. Because that's another question, which I think the answer is no to. Like, is there something that's somehow off limits? Are, are you something? asking, is there, is there one that's unsolved that is the most fascinating? Or, the, uh, or there's one I, that's... I, I leave it to you, whatever the word favorite might mean. I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> is we, that... We is do that... have one that we won't ever do. Junko. Oh, yeah. We'd never do Junko Furuta. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Don't, no, don't, don't. You, well, I don't guess, I guess Google the reason you won't it. do yeah. it is because you would, you would be doing it by describing it to me. Yeah, <laughs> that would be the product. Rough. It's the, it's really, really bad. I think we've done a lot of research and come back to your first question of like, how much does this fuck you up? Junko Fruto is the only case that I've looked at and read about that I was like, in, I was in floods of tears after I read wow. it. What happened to that girl? Is horrifying. In- it may- it, oh, interestingly, though, before I forget, like what, uh, like I think uh, Jeff did it. An astounding <laughs> thing. Uh, <laughs> these girls do a Halloween episode. Have you done how many? You have a. You've only been on for. We've done two. Okay, you've done two Halloweens. Mm-hmm. Their Halloween episodes are like they they go out of their way to <laughs> go into. Yeah, find like, the worst possible shit. Yeah. Even relative to, to true crime desensitization, like the worst, it really is super effective, by the way. Like, Thank I don't you. know if those are like your more popular episodes. Because I honestly, like, I don't, I, I don't go to these things kidding myself. Like, I'm here to be a hero. <laughs> I, I, it's the opposite. Like, I'm, I go to true crime to take a break from the pressure of like that, that exists of like, mm-hmm. oh, if I choose right or wrong, I'm a good or a bad person. And I'm listening to, where the pinball machine breaks down, like as Spencer alluded to, it's like debugging uh, uh, society. You're like going, okay, well, this is this Yul Brenner in Westworld, like went nuts and started shooting up the saloon. Like it, you, I gravitate towards that. I want to know details. I don't, I don't, I would never bother to go as far as to say, it's because I want to prevent it from happening or it's because I love the people so much or because I think I might be the guy that did it. It's it's all just like rubbernecking. It's just sort of like what what went wrong? What happened? How does this work? How it's just I don't know why I, that w- we gravitate to that stuff. Um, uh, you, you wait, but uh, we we got you said you wouldn't do that one guy that's too fucked up. Right. Do you do you have like what's uh, yeah? Do you have a favorite? It's a dumb question. It makes no yeah. sense. What's our favorite? Like it d- does, murder does, story, I it doesn't make mine cereal. <laughs> Adnan, you guys hear about this Adnan fellow? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you. Uh, look, here's my thing. I'll I'll talk for a while. I tried. I have a finally. I, Dan gets a platform. This is my. <laughs> this is my request. Because I've done, I don't remember who did that. I think maybe True Crime Garage did 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 her, uh, but I don't hear a lot about her. And I'm I continue to be confounded about what could possibly have happened and why there's not more investigation. Kanika Powell, uh, I, I think she lived in Maryland. I, I, she's American for sure. She, uh, if you look it up, Kanika K A N I K A Powell, young lady, who her uh, apartment. uh, uh, like a guy comes to her apartment door, knocks on the door and says he's an FBI agent. She's looking through the peephole. The nightmare of this story, the reason people gravitate to it is because she does everything right. She never does anything wrong. And it, it, she looks through the peephole and the guy says, I'm an FBI agent. Can I come in? I want to talk to you about something. And she goes, he holds up a badge and she's like, she asks him some question. I can't remember. It was like, do you have a badge number? Or like, is there, a, she, she knows to ask him something and he just fucking walks away. And it's like the middle of the night and she then goes over to her window and she watches this strange dude who just pretended to be an FBI agent walking away from her apartment building. And she hears another male voice saying Behind to that corner, guy, right? yeah, she doesn't see the source of the voice, but she could, she, she, she's the reason we know this is because she, she keeps records. She emails friends and family about these incidents um, that they, she hears another voice saying, other way or something like that. And the guy turns around and walks the other way. She doesn't see the source of the voice. He's going to round the corner one way and then he goes the opposite direction. I mean, I'm already terrible. If if the story ended there, I'm like, 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 I, I, um, uh, she emails, there's emails online. That's part of what's 
attractive about the case is that it's just so it's it feels like real life creepy pasta because she's we have her emails that she's sending to her friends and family and I where she's exp- explaining what happened to her and then 5 days later another knock at her door and a different guy at the door says I have a package for you and she goes where is it or something like again she doesn't she doesn't do anything stupid she reacts exactly the way you're supposed to react and the guy leaves and doesn't leave a package um it's a different guy she is like this is in a span of a week she works for a a a a, a laboratory that does work for homeland security that's part of also why this is such a fucking freak out because you can't ask the cops can't ask her job anything about who she works with uh, like like is this someone and and she had one of those jobs that where if you asked her what she did that day she had to tell you i'm not allowed to tell you now there's lots of those jobs and they're not all area 51 like level shit but there's just some certain jobs where you're not allowed to tell your family what you did that day at work she had one of those jobs and and when the when the homicide investigators call her boss, you know, after she's spoilers dead, um, the uh, uh, they they keep telling the cops, no, we can't tell you anything about about her job and, and and who she worked with and anything. And the cops are just like, okay. And, and, and so like so the, the, those two incidents happened within five days, and I think there was another knock at her door, and she's sending these emails to her mother and her sisters. It's just heartbreaking. She called this, the police, right? This, yeah, she calls the police every time, and the police come out and they talk to her and they look for clues, and and they, she calls the FBI because the guy said, and the FBI says. Yeah, no, that was definitely not an FBI agent. We would never do that, ever. We don't behave like that. We blah, blah, blah. There's like a whole slew of reasons why that could not have been us. Thank you for not opening the door. It, it, this poor girl, like, like, like she, she then emails again, like her, her family and goes, uh, 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 I, I'm, I, I think she was going to take a vacation or something like that. And she was like, she, so she had some errands to run. So, she took the day off of work after the last time she talked to the cops, uh, it, it specifically saying, like, I, I don't want to come to leave or come back to my apartment building at nighttime because I'm a woman and I live alone. So I am going to call into work, take off of work. And, like, the minute after she talks to the cops the, the third time, she goes from there and does her errands, and she comes home from her errands, and the guy that was the UPS package fake guy uh, is in her hallway and shoots her to death and runs away. And that's it. No robbery, no sexual assault, didn't want in her apartment, just wanted to kill her. Fine with killing her, not in her apartment, like didn't need to, like multiple men yeah, at least Why two, isn't three. this a task force? I, what is going on? Like, like this woman worked for a fucking lab, lab that was a government contract. Like, 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 and so, I, and everyone, everyone online, all the web slips keep saying like, well, you can rule out the idea of a government hit because it was so sloppy. Like, why would you have a fit? It's, yeah, that's not the, that's not the point. Job. Like, if I if I. <laughs> If I if I work at if I work for a it's 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 that that's the that there's a if it's it's like we're not saying that that like uh, uh the, like the Illuminati killed her it's right. a, that, that, like it's still possible for someone that that she worked with to like like want her dead and have a couple friends and all this stuff like like I can't it's just like anyways so I request I formally request that I, I only flew you guys out first class you don't have to do what I say. <laughs> Because I just can't, I just don't understand. Like I, 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 I need, I like, I, I sit in my bed at night sometimes, and I go like, what the fuck? It just, tr- it makes me feel unsafe. Like, 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 I, I, I'm like, how? So people can just decide that you should be dead, and then eventually they'll kill you, no matter how stupid they are. Yep. Well, challenge accepted. We'll have a look. <laughs> um, Dan, what can I do Dan, for you guys? Dan, will you fly me first class somewhere, or if I pick? Where I want to go? Yeah, I will. Uh, yes, I want you to go to. I want, I want to go. I want to go to Ischia, Italy. How come? Uh, because I have a podcast. That's what great. are uh, <laughs> what are what are what are what are some podcasts that you guys listen to, true crime <laughs> wise, that you, that like inspire you, challenge you, whatever? Um, 
Oh, sorry. Um, what did we listen to? We went to Transylvania. We did a road trip through Transylvania um, oh. just because we, we thought it would be fun. And it was. It was great. Um, and we listened to, in the car... Teacher's Pet. Teacher's Pet. We listened right. to the Australian one. Um, the And that's a good one. That's a great one. It's about this guy who's an identical twin. And they're both like... Um, football stars, rugby stars. Yeah, something. football or rugby, something like that. And, Aussie um, rules. He's married, he's got these kids, and then he's a PE teacher, and he is having an affair with multiple girls at school, but he's in love with one particular 15-year-old. Yeah, she's, it's always the PE teacher. Um, yeah, and then his... <laughs> and then his wife disappears, and then he moves her into his house, and then... Gives her what? her wife's clothes and her <laughs> wedding rings. And then he's like, oh, my wife ran off and joined a cult. And then the police are like, okay, cool. cool. See ya. Oh, and no. then now, because of that podcast, they've dug up the entire back garden of the house they used to live in. Wow. Did they find anything? Um, they found like a cardigan that had like stab holes in it and stuff. So it's not nothing. Yeah. A cardigan with stab, stab holes. Yeah. The old He's, stab hole. You know cardigan. what those come from? <laughs> Stabs. Yeah. yeah, I heard that one. That one is uh, yeah. Those serialized like well produced ones like Dirty John, Doctor Death, yeah. uh, The Dropout. We've been listening to. Recently. That's, That's so really good. good. And we're drawing a hard thick line. We talked about this at dinner. Like. Fuck these like weird Geraldo esque like look. I'm just gonna say it. Tenderfoot like TV like I it's active cases where people yeah. are like I thought I'd try to do a podcast. This is happening to me. I can't believe people are listening. Yee dee dee. dee. Um, th there's a popular one now called To Live and Die in L. A. Yeah, I we hate them. <laughs> I think it's an incredibly poor taste and like like I, like yeah like really <laughs> irresponsible. That was the opposite of a you. Uh, Whoa! How are you doing, Dave Klein? What's going on over How's there? How's it going? Yeah, doing great. I mean, uh, Dan I just Harmon. Look at, look at, well, first off, let's give Dan Harmon a round of applause. Look at this fit man. Let look at this, this fit man. man. Every other morning at Hell 8 a.m. Yeah. Pacific, Dan Harmon is putting in an hour of work. We're talking about planks. We're talking about core work. We're talking about bench presses. We're talking about doing some bicep work and freestyle rapping. All right? Whoa. We're talking about Dan, we'll, Dan give, it, give, us, give us a plank. Oh. Give us a, a, ra a rapping plank. <laughs> yeah, can you, can you rap and plank? Rapping plank. I'm so sorry. Can you sorry. rap and plank <laughs> at the same time? I'm so sorry. Oh, 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 my God. Zach, what you, got, you, you, you got a beat oh, for a no. sec. for you. I, I Dave, you'll have to hold some, the mic. Some plank on rap. Yeah, I got the mic. Oh, Don't oh. do feedback. No feedback. No feedback. Yeah. All right. Give that to Jeff. Thank you. Jeff, you do feedback. Here we go. This is, we're making podcast history right now. Or Yo. we're making softcore porn. I can't tell what's going on right now. Oh, we're making it. This Yo. is like a case for Asperger Detective. Yo. Yo. Okay, here we go. Yo. Playing Yo. rap. Yo. Yeah. Yo. 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 Breathe yeah. in. Breathe out. I got the delts and the smelts. I'm blasting glutes and I've, whoever smelt. Oh, yeah. It <laughs> dealt the fitness. Smelly. 100, 200 planks, you witness. No bell. Yo, I'm gonna curl some biceps. I fucked your mama so hard, she was a tri tip Sex. steak a with Bernays sauce. I fuck your mama and I'm never at a loss Next. of fitness. Self care. <sighs> Cause I'm losing my hair and. Plank. This is what old white middle-aged men do. Rapping while planking. You start to die, so you want to live. My body's going away. I'm turning into dust, and I'm here to say. I like to have a midlife crisis today. <laughs> Driving a Tesla isn't helping the Earth, we found out. Because it has a giant battery in it that's charged by coal plants <laughs> and then you throw the car in a garbage dump <laughs> and your change to your carbon footprint is a net zero cliffhanger thank you for coming to Harmon Town everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. let's give it up for Dave Klein fitness guru yeah, yeah. extraordinaire that was a really stable plank yeah yeah Let's give it for Hannah Cerucci, everybody from Red Handed. I'm Jeff Davis, your controller. Spencer Crittenden is your game master. You're planking, Mayor.
is Dan Harmon. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. Thank you to Zach and Church and Chris and everybody for coming. We love you all. Drive fast, take chances. Huh. What happened? Yeah, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> Show's over, Dan. Are you alive? Are you, are you, are you okay? Oh, yeah. How's your core? <laughs> Thank you, Hannah and Sarucci.